they're going to make contact. Shuddering Burns heading towards the wall. Oh, big crash, big crash, big crash. The goal point is going to get hit. Oh, what a move. Evans up through Beau Rivage, takes the lead of the Monaco E-Pri. Absolutely outrageous stuff from the Kiwi. The season so far has been one of firsts. The first night race, the first on a new layout in Rome, the first race on a permanent track in Valencia, and Formula E's first race on the full Monaco circuit. Now we've reached the midpoint of the season, it's time to look back on the story so far. Push, 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 push. Guys, what the f is that? Seriously? Yeah, definitely last lap, flat out. There's the look from Vern. Vern is going for Evans, round the outside of the new Nouvelle Chicane. In the season opener, Mercedes EQ picked up where they left off in Berlin last summer. Pole position and the race win in round one in Diria. Nick De Vries proved that he is no number two driver. He learned the tricks of the trade in his debut season in season six, and now he's here for points. Complete ownership of the day for the Dutchman, and not the last we'd see of him or Mercedes EQ on the podium. To be able to kind of translate it into the race was very satisfying because it wasn't easy with so many safety cars and also the, the pace was very unpredictable at the start of the race. So it was difficult to know how we, how we could manage the energy and there was quite a lot of communication going on. Uh, so very pleased that we uh, yeah, scored our first win for, um, for the championship. Jaguar Racing were tired of falling short in previous seasons. So they sought out the services of Sam Bird to team up with Mitch Evans. Both proven race winners, they enjoyed a flying start to their season. Two podiums in the first weekend showed that they are a strong team proposition. And Bird's battling and win in round two helped him maintain his exclusive stat of being the only driver to win a race in every season of Formula E. But they've been, they welcome me with open arms. Great bunch of guys, just so happy that I could give them a result today. Two drama-filled races in the opening weekend reminded us after a long break of how small the margins for error are in Formula E and the intensity of tight street circuit racing. And there was more drama to follow. From Mitch Evans trying to go side by side with Alex Lynn. Raston, Verline, and he goes to the outside of the chicane, snatches the right front. They're going to make contact. Shannon and Burns heading towards the wall. Absolutely unmanaged and uncontrolled. Breathe, boys, breathe. <laughs> Two wet race days in Rome caused havoc. Tricky bumps and changes to the surface were made even more challenging by the rain, and the new mini electric safety car, unveiled on the same weekend, was kept very busy. Jean Eric Verne, the two time champion, had only one win to his name in the previous title defending season, but the debut of the DS to Cheetah team's 2021 car and powertrain led to the win in the first of the Rome races made even more impressive considering his car was severely damaged in free practice. A great team effort and a sign of things to come from the outfit with two teams and three driver championship titles. It, it, was, it was tough, you know, the, those conditions were extremely tricky, so I'm very pleased that first of all I, we, didn't, we didn't make any mistakes and uh, the strategy was good and, uh, and uh, you know, if it's, if it's good to be back on top of the podium. Round three was also Jaguar's first double podium in Formula E, again showing that the British team are title contenders. Consistent driver pairings are unusual in Formula E, but almost unheard of in the Jaguar team before this season. A great formula for securing both driver and team's titles if it could be replicated. Yeah, it played out very, very nicely. Obviously, when you, when you start P10, you're hoping for some points, you don't know how many, but to get 18 today was uh, fantastic for myself, to, for the team to get, yeah, whatever 15 plus 18 is, I'm not a mathematician, <laughs> tough maths that. Um, you know, a double podium, let's call it that. A double podium is, is sensational, their first one in Formula E, so um, very proud of everybody involved, but uh, they gave us a good car today, got to say. Qualifying conditions in round four favoured the later qualifying groups and left us with a rookie front row starting the race. But an experience in Formula E got the better of them. Nick Cassidy, with a big lockup on the first racing lap, lost the lead only to have his race ended by an incident with Oliver Rowland just a few laps later. Norman Nato started P2, but ended up being disqualified for overconsumption of energy. But this wouldn't be the last we'd see of rookies leading the pack. 
Mercedes EQ were eager to follow up their round one success and bounce back from the nightmare of the day before in the first of the Rome races. Stoffel van Dorn further proving his and the team's ambitions with a commanding race win. Well managed, even with multiple safety cars, to climb up from fourth to take and hold the lead. Two wins in four races. The Mercedes EQ team were looking like they meant business. At this point though, only one thing was for sure. The racing was closer than ever and the competition exceptionally strong. After only three rounds into the season, every team had scored points. Formula E's first race on a permanent circuit configuration was made even more interesting by rain affecting the race in round five and qualifying in round six. In the first of the Valencia races, Mercedes executed a flawless energy management strategy to get both cars on the podium. De Vries with a calculated, smart drive and Van Dorn taking full advantage of the luck thrown his way when the usable energy chaos set in at the end of the race. Came a bit unexpected and um, after the kind of difficult weekend we had in Rome and the five seconds penalty and everything, it was uh, yeah time to get back and the team just executed it perfectly and uh, I'm kind of a bit surprised to see number five stuff, my mate, uh, next to me on the podium as well. But uh, yeah, great day for us and very, very pleased. In round six, the qualifying group saw a drastic track evolution with a rapidly drying surface, which resulted in the final group out being the drivers to top the grid and BMW rookie Jake Dennis on pole. It was a lights to flag victory for the rookie British driver as he showed similar energy management and composure to that of a Formula E veteran. Big for Dennis, even bigger for BMW i Andretti Motorsport, who'd had seven DNFs out of a possible 10 between their two drivers going into round six. I am so happy. I am so happy. You might even have a beer. In his sixth ABD FIA Formula E race, Jake Dennis takes his first win. We also saw three-time Le Mans winner Andre Lotterer get on the score sheet after a nightmare start to the season with the Tag Heuer Porsche team's second podium. Alex Lynn also managing to clinch his first podium after three seasons racing in Formula E and for three different teams. Good to see his pace and racecraft rewarded after that horrifying crash earlier in the campaign. Yeah, no, cheers guys, honestly, it's been so long until I finally got on a podium in Formula E. <laughs> It was like honestly a long, long time and it, it feels really sweet. I, I can, so I just got to say a big thanks to Mahindra. We worked really hard and finally put one on the board. Formula E finally racing on the full Monaco circuit gave us one of the greatest races in the championship's history. A racing spectacle from start to finish. Six changes of the lead, including a period of the race where there were three different leaders in consecutive laps and last lap overtakes that switched up the entire podium. Big race long battles between De Costa, Evans and Fryens, and some audacious overtaking moves in areas of the circuit that haven't seen overtakes like that in decades. He's gonna be all over the back of De Costa. He's going for it now. Oh, what a move. Evans up through Beau Rivage, takes the lead of the Monaco e Prix. De Costa took the win, his first since Berlin, after coming so close in Valencia. Well, uh, what happened there? It was ours. A super smart strategy, efficient energy management, and very bold racing. De Costa to the outside and to the lead! The title defense back on track for both De Costa and the DS to Cheetah team. How does it feel, winner of the 2021 Monaco uh, E-Prix? It's pretty good. <laughs> it feels pretty good. <laughs> I mean, and, and also in the way that I knew the race was going to be so hard with the energy management and, um, you know, we played a perfect, perfect strategy uh, with the team telling me all the information I needed to know at the right time, all the attack modes and, and everything was really well played and, oh my God, I mean, how many lead changes we had in a Monaco Ypres, I, I mean, that, that doesn't happen in any other racing series, you know, so... Do you I think made... that last one was the, the best overtake of your career? It was definitely the, ric the riskiest. <laughs> I thought I wasn't going to make the corner, but um, you know, Mitch, Mitch, he, he was super fair on, and, and Robin as well. Super hard, but always super fair. I love racing these guys when it's like this, so love it. The desire to stay out in front and win in Monaco, every driver's dream, meant Mitch Evans was frivolous with his energy management and it cost him dearly. The overconsumed didn't leave enough to be able to push in the closing stages, losing the lead and second place on the final lap. And Fry 
Reigns gets second, does he? Yes! Reigns on the line! But still, more solid points for him and Jaguar Racing. Formula E, more often than not, goes right down to the wire. So consistent point scoring, even without race wins, is absolutely crucial. Case in point, Robin Fryan's podium in Monaco now means he tops the standings. Only achieving one other podium in round two, but consistent point scoring has kept his and the Envision Virgin Racing Team's title hopes in sight. Multiple race winning Mercedes EQ went into Monaco top of both the leaderboards, but a double DNF for the German Giants shook the standings and now only seven points separate the top three teams of Mercedes EQ, Jaguar Racing and DS to Cheetah. What do these teams have in common? Both drivers of each team have either won a race or scored podiums. Now that is a level of team consistency that we are not accustomed to in this championship, but will it continue in the second half of the season? At the mid-season break, there's fewer than 20 points between the top seven in the driver standings and strong performances shown across the grid. We said after pre-season testing that this was shaping up to be Formula E's most competitive season yet, and it's looking like we were right. The drivers and teams titles mean more than ever this season as it's the first chance to get their hands on a Formula E World Championship title. This battle is only intensifying. Giants of the automotive industry and racing fighting wheel to wheel in the most competitive field in motorsport. There's still lots to play for and in this championship things can change very quickly and unexpectedly. The story continues in Mexico.